everybody. Ranger Stop and Pop. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing still? It is an honor to be here with you this weekend, and the honor is really going to be all of ours in just a moment as the original Blue Ranger himself is here. He's been an inspiration to thousands, if not millions of people throughout the world, and we're going to touch on that and 30 years of Power Rangers history. Please welcome the Blue Ranger, David Yost. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Very good to see you. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Oh, I didn't put stairs on the side. I used to be a little. That was so ungraceful. Yeah, but thank you for asking. Uh, welcome to the convention, sir. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, you can use that wireless one if you'd like there. It's muted. Just hit this button right now. Okay. All right. And one other thing as well, if you would, please, no videography for this particular panel. Uh, we, unless uh, that's normally a thing I, that was just brought to my attention. So you can take some photos, I suppose. But if you would, uh, I mean, it's up to you, I suppose. But uh, I mean, I don't, I don't care. I mean, typically okay. people video this. Sure. Okay. If you're okay, I'm okay. Yeah. I only say that at, at my table. Oh, yes, like at the table. People are always walking by. Well, and everybody's everything. trying to get a quick over, shot. And my yeah. hair looks like crap, and it ends <laughs> up on the internet, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. You don't need that, exactly. I don't need that. Well, it's an honor to have you here with us today, sir. Thank you very much for joining us back at Ranger Stop and Pop here in Atlanta. You see, we got a pretty full room because you're one of the most popular characters in the history of the franchise. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's... It's amazing, and I, I think most of what we'll probably talk about today is the, the once and always special and things like that, but um, the 30 years of this, the legacy, the, uh, what this means to the fans and the people, um, I know your departure from the show was a long time ago and something that might not even be something you like to think about, but the, uh, the impact you've had on people, has that affected you? And seeing this 30th anniversary resurgence, uh, has there been even more of that? Well, I mean, uh, as we say, once a ranger, always a ranger. So, uh, you know, you never escape being a Power Ranger, no matter how, no matter how hard you try. Uh, so, there were certainly years after I left that I just was trying to close that chapter, but it just was never meant to be. <laughs> so, even though it's been all these years, I mean, there isn't a day that goes by that somebody doesn't recognize me and say, Hey, you're that guy. Uh, can I take a picture with you? And so, uh, I'm like, yes, of course. So, once a Ranger, you're always a Ranger. Uh, and, you know, for me, it's extremely humbling. Uh, uh, obviously, 30 years ago when we started the television series, uh, we never, I'll speak for myself, I never thought uh, that it would have the longevity or the sustainability that it's had. Uh, so thank you to all of you guys uh, for, thank you, yeah, clap for yourselves. Because as I, uh, as I tell people, uh, if it wasn't for you, I would not be who I am, so I'm totally indebted to you. So thank you, and I genuinely mean that. I'm so suddenly paranoid, because <laughs> oh, right. I haven't uh, I haven't eaten. Oh no! Well, yeah. I, I hadn't eaten all day, and so they <laughs> <laughs> they gave me uh, they gave me black bean burgers. Of course, right before you so come out. So suddenly I'm like, oh, I probably have black bean in my teeth as I'm talking, but I, I think I'm okay. Uh, so anyway, 30 years ago, we never would have thought that the show would be as popular as it is for all these years. So, um, you know, again, I'm very humbled by it, and uh, it's been awesome that uh, all these years I've been uh, gifted to go around to different Comic-Cons throughout the world and get to meet fans such as yourselves and uh, just hear about how Power Rangers uh, influenced uh, or changed your life in some way. Uh, we hear so many stories about, uh, you know, people being in uh, broken homes or difficult situations, but Power Rangers was always uh, a saving grace for so many people. And so uh, I'm totally, totally uh, love to hear stories like that. And I'm glad that Power Rangers was that strong support for you. Billy, uh, especially, I don't want to speak for all the fans, but I was one of those fans who Billy was my favorite Power Ranger for the reasons that you hear all the time. Uh, it's the brains over brawn, the fact that you do not have to be a martial artist to win every battle. Uh, and the fact that everyone has a place on a team. Um, regardless of what was going on behind the scenes, you as a Power Ranger 
brought that to life. And that's what you hear all the time, and that's why these guys are still here. So I want to humbly thank you for that. But as we do that, um, let's talk for a moment about the 30th anniversary. Netflix brings you guys back finally to do this project. But elements of this project uh, seem very similar to a story that you had started working on a few years ago. Would you like to comment at all about how much or they did or didn't use about that? Walter. <laughs> Walter Jones. Walter coming? <laughs> hey, man. Grab a seat. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, bud. We got enough mics for everybody. Yeah. What's up, guys? Well, the two OGs. Yeah. There you go. Excellent. The two original range. But anyway, David, if you, yeah, you can take that one if you want to be a part of it. Yeah. Oh. Anything. Yeah, whatever works. Uh, well, I will say, like, in terms of my story, the quantum continuum, there's no real overlap of story. So um, my story is totally different in a lot of ways. Uh, other, the, only, the only similarity, I guess, is that Trini, unfortunately, passes away. But that's the only similarity between the two. So, but I was pitching that series to uh, Hasbro. I was... Pa I was uh, this one too. We've got so many to okay. try. I know, yeah. Oh, okay. So I was pitching that one to Hasbro, and uh, we had several conversations about it, but uh, I can't really say too much as to why it didn't move forward, but at, at that time they were like, unfortunately at this time we can't move forward with your series, but we can do this. And so they were greenlit to do uh, basically a 44-minute special, um, to which I said, how can you tell a story in 44 minutes? I don't think that's going to work. Uh, and the original, the original uh, concept was for the original cast, specifically Austin St. John, Walter Jones, myself, Amy Jo Johnson, Jason David Frank. It was based around our characters. Unfortunately, a lot of uh, circumstances happened where that couldn't happen, and so they were changing the script and changing the script and changing the script, and we ended up with where we ended with Once and Always. Uh, and from what I hear from you guys, you guys liked it, so I'm very... <laughs> what do we think, everybody? Yes. So that's that's how that all came about. I thought that was I thought it was a pretty lovely tribute to Twee as well in that. Yeah. So I'm glad that they were able to put that together. Uh, I wanted to ask you. I guess I can ask both of you this, Walter, if you want to answer it too. Um, this was your first time back on the series in many decades, going through multiple owners between the two time periods. Um, obviously, the '90s is not today. Everybody knows it's a little different, regardless. But going back to set and being in Power Rangers must have been in many ways inherently different while also being the same, correct? What was the new production team like in comparison to what you guys remember from the past? Well, it was uh, once one, they were from New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a big, but it's a culturally different. different group of people, yeah, right? culturally different people. Um, but I, I think for the majority of it, I, I, a lot of things were similar. Um, obviously, the, I think the production quality was much better. We had rehearsal time. We actually got to rehearse our fights, which is not something we got to do much before. And including the scenes, which was nice. Um, filming was, I think, the thing that was very different um, because it was in video. So we could see playback. Okay. You know, like when I did that in the juice bar, when I did the backflip, uh, I'd done it like three times. And they said, um, uh, I went over and I saw it. It was a slow motion. I was like, oh, that's cool. And I said, do you want to do it again? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. The fact you did it at all was good enough as far as I'm concerned. It means you still got it all. So that's pretty cool. Uh, soon we will actually turn to the audience for some questions. But before that, uh, we'll just continue on a little bit here with the story. Uh, David, just starting right at the uh, beginning of the thing, you're out there fighting uh, against the Robo Rita, and, they, and then the flashback with uh, the Alpha character. As you read the story, um, both of you for that matter, um, were, were there things you thought, oh, I wouldn't, I don't think Billy would be like this, or Zach, or was it all pretty much stuff that you thought would be cool with, for, for lack of a better term? Well, I will say uh, I did push back a lot. Yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do say good because the character has been you for these years. Yeah. Well, that and uh, just you know, there was a lot of things that I don't think that they were thinking about uh, that I kind of had to say. You know, you can't just do that. Yeah. You have to sort of explain that. Yeah. So uh, you know, but in general, I would say they 
they did their best, and I think they really got Billy. Uh, unfortunately, with Billy, it seems like you know Billy says a lot of words. Uh, he's very his the character is very expositional, so he's always explaining things. So I don't get to do as many amazing dramatic moments as uh, say Walter got to do because I'm always like, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna be invisible. We're gonna da 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 da. Very boring stuff. So. Uh, but it, it, it moves the story forward. So they, they did a good job of keeping Billy along like that, but I do wish there would have been a few more uh, moments for Billy. Uh, I think there was a, a huge moment missed uh, between Billy and Min, mm -hmm. uh, because essentially Trini, Trini gives up her life for Billy, and then Min essentially, sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. <laughs> I hope you have watched it. <laughs> I know, yeah. And then essentially Min does exactly the same thing. Yeah. And there's no moment, like as a character, that's, that's crazy for me to think that these two women, yeah. power to women, uh, gave up their, or giving up their life. And Min's me. intention too was that. She didn't she, know what would happen, so therefore it yeah. would happen. So you know, there, was, there, there was never that true moment for Billy and Min, even though they tell me, oh, it's in the juice bar, but it's it's not. That's a moment, but it's, it's a not. Moment, but it's not the moment impact. that I that I think the characters needed to, to really solidify their connection. So uh, that's the only thing. But in general, you know, it, it took like four, probably from the time that we landed in uh, New Zealand, at least four rewrites. Yeah. And uh, you know, I I said things foolishly, uh, like. You know, at the at the beginning when uh, Trini dies, they have it all as costumed characters. Yeah. And I said, you know, it's kind of foolish. Here's this huge dramatic moment, and we're doing it in helmets. Yeah. I said, since Walter and I are here, you should have it so we take off our helmet, and you know, we get to show some emotion. And they're like, okay. And it <laughs> and at that at that meeting, they're like, yeah, we can shoot that anywhere. We'll just shoot it against the sky. We'll just have you guys take off your helmet. No big deal. But then it turned into this huge fiasco where we're out on the ledge, uh, on you know, on the cliff, whatever, and we're in our full suit, and they made a big production about it all through the day, and of course, my hair, Walter looks perfect. Mm. Billy, Billy has a cut on his lip, and my hair is like all over the place, and you know, there's so many photos that they wanted to use for publicity, and I'm like, heck no, 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 this is, this is forever. But they didn't get it. But uh, anyway, so I, you know, some of the things I really pushed for, uh, I look, I step back and go, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And As then, a fan, though, we appreciate moments I, yeah, like I that. So I, I'm so, glad yeah. that you can at least uh, take that from it. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> How about you, Walter? Anything that you would, would besides what he's hit on there? You know, I mean, I actually, uh, well, whatever the senator, whatever yeah. he is, uh, yeah. he looked at and said, I don't agree with that. If I agree with him, and we we both said, okay, you know what? We don't think that's right. I know there were a couple of moments where we talked about the Morpheus sequence, how it went because they wanted to change that a little bit, and that was a thing. It was like, no, we did it like this. No, we're doing it like this now. It was like, oh, well, we're not going to do it like that. So <laughs> it was, it was just thing. don't do it that yeah, way. Okay, so we had a few impacts that got, you know, solidified. Um, but in general, everything was cool. I, I remember uh, and there was one moment in the juice bar, sorry, not the juice bar, in the command center, when uh, Johnny on Bosch and Karen Ashley are leaving, and we're standing on different sides of the, of the uh, command center, and um, and we are just kind of saying goodbye, and I was like, this feels stiff to me. And like, Zach is personable. I feel like I would touch them and say goodbye. I would, I'd be like a, there would be a moment where I'd be like, all right, Good to see y'all, you know, whatever. I mean, because that's who Zach is. And so maybe it was like in the original episode where you guys weren't even there and it was like they filmed this half and then this half. They wanted to pay an homage to that so you right? never interact. I was like, okay, yeah. well, then my hair would have to change a few times, right? That's it, yeah. But, um, Changing shirt colors, things yeah, like but that. But we, yeah. we did. I actually get to go and say goodbye, Karen and Johnny. And I think that was important for the fans, too, to see that there was love between the two Black Rangers. It wasn't like anything that was like crazy. It's like, no, we're all on the same team and it's all good, you know? Yeah. That makes good sense. Absolutely good sense. Now, I know some of you guys have questions. I said that before, and so we will actually start turning to the audience with some of those. So uh, raise your hand if you do have a question. I figured that'd be a lot of you. Okay, very cool. Well, I, do you mind if we do, like, we'll line up and go out there, or, or she can walk around with the questions? Uh, uh, let's start right up in the front there. Yeah, sure, he's got it, his hand up first. Hello. Well, I have a question for both. Well, like, what are your fav What was your favorite part in Once and Always? His, 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 when in fighting Robo Rita and Robo Snizzard and Robo Minotaur. Did you guys see that Robo Rita today, by the way? I did. Oh, neat yeah. cosplay, huh? Yeah, I didn't mean to interject, but yeah. Um, 
I would say my favorite part was the juice bar doing hip hop keto against the putties. Yes. Yeah. The, the what shot? The magnet trap, you know, with the, the magnet crank. trap was pretty cool. That was good of the character of Cat to come up with that. I helped come up with that idea, and uh, I thought that was pretty clever that we magnetized them up there. It was cool too. Cat used the crane, she just used like the crane, on yeah. the, just like in the Zords. Yeah, cool. Excellent. All right. First of all, just thank you guys for everything. Um, not really movie or, or episode related, but. How does it make you guys feel seeing that it's not just our older generation that are still super fans of you guys that that we're kind of passing on your guys' legacy to our to our to our kids to kind of keep you guys going? How does how does that make you guys feel? <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, like, all right. So, I mean, we have the best fans in the world. Yeah, it's been give it up for yourselves. The, the fact that Power Rangers has is, is been around for 30 years is because of you guys. And um, and I love the stories I hear when, when people come up to me and they go, yeah, man, I came home from work and my son was watching Power Rangers. And I was like, hey, scoot over. <laughs> you know, like, and and being, being told by, by parents, thank you for creating something that I can enjoy with my kids is um, it's awesome. It's like, I love it. Yeah. I mean, I would just say it's extremely humbling, I would say, for us because, you know, we're multi, multi-generational now because your parents had to watch it with you, you guys watched it as kids, and now your kids are watching it, so we at least have three generations, but then grandma and grandpa come in and say, oh, no, no, I, I was watching it too, so it's like four generations of people, so it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome to know that the whole family can sort of bond with Power Rangers. It's funny to me though when the um, sorry. It's funny to me though when little kids walk up to me and they're like, "Yeah, I grew up watching your show." I'm like, and I'm like, and I'm like, "Well, how old are you?" I'm nine. And I'm like, "Let me know when you grow." Well, and then when did you start it. watching it? Oh, when I was five. And I'm like, "Okay, you still growing up." <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, my question is, what is y'all's favorite episode of all time? Oh, all yeah. time. Uh, for me, it would be Power Ranger Punks when Billy and Kimberly got to be punks. That was awesome. Um, you know, it, it changes all the time because I, I get familiar with other episodes. I, I see other episodes. Oh, that was a good one. Like, somebody reminded me today about Putty on the Brain. Oh, yeah. That was, that was it. Right, right, right. And I was like, I was like that was a fun episode because I was like, everybody was like turning to putties and I was freaking out. I was like, what, what the hell is going on? Yeah, it was, it was cool. It was cool. I, I thought that was a very fun episode. Um, and be besides that, though, my general go-to is like Foo Fight. Yeah. Yeah. That was like the first time that I was on a set, and I was like, "You guys are paying me to do this? This, this is awesome." I mean, not, not, not that much, right? But we, we walked into the set that day, and everybody was wearing plastic ponchos, and we we're like looking around, going. Oh, for real? I'm like, if you wear a plastic poncho, that means you expect to get hit by some food. <laughs> Game on, let's go. <laughs> now, yes, it is 30 years later, but talking about back then and, and all of the impacts they've had, I know there's more questions, but I just want to step briefly back to the Universal Studios day with you two. I've heard a couple of others talk about that day, but going into that, uh, this was back, if you don't remember, when Power Rangers was going into, uh, before the second season, Universal completely sold out the park admission just to see the Power Rangers at what they thought was going to be like a 200 person thing, kind of like this. Uh, but when you went out there, what was, what was your reaction to that? And has it stuck with you at all over the years? I know that was a, a minute ago. I mean, it, it's pretty, uh it's pretty crazy to think about because I don't think there's been any other franchise period ever yeah. ever that's shut the shut doors. The freeway down. <laughs> yeah. Well, shut the freeway down number one, but also shut the doors to Universal Studios. Uh, I mean that we could never have predicted that. Uh, like you said, uh, we were there to do a show for like one little show for 200 kids. That's all they thought was going to be there, and it turned into this. I say seven shows. Some people say six shows, but each show yeah. seated six to seven thousand kids. So we saw about 30,000 people that day, which is crazy. Uh, and it was an amazing experience. And that's sort of, I think, the day that we understood 
everybody's always saying, you guys are the number one kid show, you're the number one kid show, but I don't think I don't it really registered. Yeah. But that day, we were like, oh my gosh, this is <laughs> insane. Crazy. And then we go home that night, and uh, you know, we're, we've made national news and all that kind of stuff. So it was pretty awesome. Yeah, um, that day, I, I, was, I was recalling the other day, um, the, we started on scaffolding, all right? So we're on scaffolding. And we rehearsed this uh, with the lights on, and you could see the, you know, the seats in the back, and it was like, this place is huge. Oh my God, this is going to be amazing. And then when we did the show, the lights are off. So now we can't see. We can't, and the lights are shining at us, so we're almost blind. We're on the scaffolding, and we were all entering the stage by doing flips off the scaffolding into a bat. So, with the helmets on. So, I remember thinking, oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. I'm like, <laughs> and, and, and I think what I did was I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do a flip, hit the mat, but I don't know exactly how I'm going to land, so I'm going to hit the mat and roll so that I can hit the stage. So I did a flip, front flip, hit the mat, felt it, rolled out of it, stood up, went and did my martial arts down the, down the stage, came back to the middle, and I took off my helmet, and he like, he downs the power of the Mastodon, he is Zach, the Black Ranger. I took off my helmet, and the crowd went, ah. and I was like, oh my God. And then... And now all of a sudden, all the, everybody took a, a picture, so it was like flashes, like going to warp speed. It was like, it was, that was so wild. Was, never had an experience like that. It was my biggest rock star moment. Well deserved, though, for both of you and the rest of the cast. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, guys. Um, so with, with so many generations of Power Rangers, is there ever a time you look at a generation you're like, oh my gosh, I would have loved to have been a part of this generation. If I wasn't a Mighty Morphin, Zeal would have been fun to be a part of, or Beast Morphers would have been fun to be a part of. Is there any uh, other generation that you would love to have joined based on like the power and the monsters? Well, I saw this cast and it was pretty cool. It was Power Rangers once and always. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> um, that was really pretty cool because that business guy named Billy in it. And I was like, he was awesome. He was like, you know, I was like, he's he very cool. I mean, I would say the answer is no, uh, just to be fair. I mean, Mighty Morphin obviously uh, has a special place, I think, for all of us in the original cast. I can't imagine being in another cast. Uh, so it's a huge honor. And, um, you know, again, I just did a little media thing, a little press thing right before I came here, and they were asking me something similar about who's your favorite Blue Ranger from other seasons? And I'm like, don't turn the crowd against me. Uh, I'm not... I'm not uh, in the demographic to watch Power yeah, Rangers, really. So I, I don't know. I know the actors, but I don't know what their characters are about. So to be honest, I don't really know that much about the other seasons. So I just say MMPR. Yeah. Zio was, Zio was okay, but Mighty Morphin. I'm going to say happy 30th anniversary to Power Rangers 30 years ago. I was three years old when you guys first came out, and you still look the same. With, I'm, now, I'm now in my 30s. I'll look the same in the next 20 years, like you in your 50s, when I'm in my 50s. My question is... <laughs> sorry. Well, my question is, what was your favorite moment, though, with Jason David Frank in the series, just like you did with Tree Train, with... Billy saying high five was his tree, and Walter said all of it. So what was your favorite moment with Jason Frank now? I mean, Jason Frank was just uh, our set prankster, I would say. So he was, uh, he was a wild child. Uh, not very disciplined for being a martial artist, I'll say. Uh, <laughs> but he always had us laughing. He always had us in stitches. Uh, I, I would say my favorite, one of my favorite moments with Jason, and we tell this one uh, quite often, is when we did an episode where we had to ride ATVs. And uh, we were told to go out into our parking lot and rehearse riding an ATV, uh, which is like a, all, you know, a four-wheel drive, whatever. And our producer specifically said, do not take these out of the parking lot. Ride around in the parking lot and get used to it. Jason hears, don't do this, and he immediately thinks the other. And so he, uh, he rides his ATV up the hill outside of the parking lot and then up a dirt hill, and we just see him go full charge up the hill, and then you just see him drop down behind it. <laughs> I mean, it was like, uh, and then you don't know what happened. We're like, did he die? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, no more green. What green. happened? And then he was gone for like a while, not a long time, but like five minutes. And then all of a sudden you see him come back up over the hill. 
But I imagine he probably, he never probably confessed to this, but I imagine he probably fell off and did a horrible role and probably hurt himself and was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? He composed himself. And then he composed himself and came back <laughs> over the hill. But uh, it did take a long time. It did take a long time. But that was, the part that was funny was that he went up and then he just disappeared. It was just like, <laughs> that was, it was just like a moment out of a movie. And then, you know, he came back and got yelled at. But he always, <laughs> he always got away with everything. If any of the rest of us had done that, we would have been like, called to the producer's office saying, do you really like your job? Are you really happy here? Uh, because <laughs> we would have been scolded, but he somehow got away with everything. That's my favorite moment. It's good. Uh, I think one of my favorite moments uh, was when he first walked in. Like, when we first met him, um, he came on the set and we were like, who's this guy? Okay, oh yeah, he's gonna be the Green Ranger. Okay, all right. And he start, he's over in the corner and he starts practicing some of his martial arts and he does like the triple jumps kick. He's like, who's your, who's your, who's your? And I was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I wanna do that, I wanna yeah. do that. I, was like, I, I could do that, but then I was like, well, I can't steal his move. Oh man. I was like, but he, he motivated me to to make my, my martial arts stuff more impressive because that triple kick was awesome. It was like, ooh, we got flights. So then we started doing, like in the second season, we started, well, I started doing like triple kicks where I jump up, do a jump split kick and kick another kick before I land. It was like, pop, pop. It was like, it became a challenge to do more intricate stuff. So that was, that was really cool. Um, yes, hi. Um, just wanted to know for like if they were to shoot season one, episode one today, what would you guys want to keep about your um, performances that you did 30 years ago, and what would you guys want to change for today? They reshot the pilot. Uh, would you want to change anything about the performance? Oh. Uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, whatever we did worked, so uh, let's just keep, let, don't break it, and don't, and don't fix it if it ain't broken. I would only change that I had to wear overalls all the time. Yeah. That, that would be my biggest criticism. If I could change anything about Billy, it was the overalls for 40 episodes. Mm. So, other than that, I wouldn't change anything. Rock, Walter, rock. I rock those It is overalls. good in season two, at least you started wearing polos and, you know, that's... That's pretty. David pretty was cool. such a handsome guy. I mean, right? It's such a. Well, it's, it's, no, David uh, was such a handsome. No, I'm, but I'm saying when, he, when we were we first started the show, he auditioned to be the Red Ranger. So he was like this close to being the Red Ranger, and then they they decide, okay, we're gonna get somebody else. And then he he went away. He came back. He knocked on the door. We're like, doing the scene. We're like, what, what's going on? He, they opened the door and he said, uh, can I read for the Blue Ranger? Uh, no, we, we've already seen, we're just going to let you go. And he's like, uh, and, and then we don't really see you as the Blue Ranger. So it goes away. All of a sudden, there's a knock on the door again. He opens the door and he's got on glasses, his hair is disheveled, he's got on a shirt, and he looks so nerdy. I mean, because he was this handsome guy, he's like so handsome, but you're like, nah, he's not a nerd. He's this handsome, you know, 90210 Jason Priestley. And we're like, and, um, and he comes in and we do the scene and he killed it. And it was like, dang, I was like, this boy got chops, let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, so first of all, uh, we're really nice to meet you guys, and yeah, and one, and let me tell you, once and always, we're totally awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I actually got a question for uh, Mr. Jones. So um, so about the hip hop keto was is that like an actual martial arts technique, or was that something you invented yourself? Um, it was something that I invented, but I mean, it was what they called for the character. So when I auditioned for the character Zach, they were looking for somebody that could create this idea of hip hop keto. They had no idea what it was going to look like. But one of the writers went like, wouldn't it be cool if we had a character that danced hip hop? Because hip hop was like so hot. It was a thing in 93. So it could dance hip hop, but then like do martial arts at the same time. So somebody had that concept, and then they had the audition. Um, we ended up with three casts. We had like a short cast, we had a tall cast, and kind of like an older character cast or something. They went to the network. 
And so there were three Zacks, right? So one Zack was, uh, I forget his name, but he played Michael Jackson in a movie later on. He has, his style of hip-hop keto was kind of like Michael Jackson. He was like, you know, it was like, it's kind of, it was a little weird, right? Not, not quite, not quite hip hop keto. And the other guy was kind of like more like hip hop, like kind of funky, but not really a martial artist. So we wasn't really apply the whole thing together. But because I had the skill set to do all three as a martial artist, as a gymnast, and as a dancer, I was able to make it have a flow. And the flow was what was attractive to about hip hop keto. So then when we got on the set, it was like, okay. Hip hop, they would say, Zach does hip hop keto, and that's what I would have to put those, something together. So I created it, but it's not a, a proven form of martial arts. It's more a, you know, a stage. It's stage, because the putties are never really trying to hit me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, could Zach and Billy do more Power Ranger movies? Do you think we would see Zach and Billy again? Good question. Uh, well, I mean, time will tell. I certainly hope so. Uh, I hope that once and always proves something to Hasbro, the owners of the franchise at this point. Uh, you know, they, they didn't really put a lot of promotion into the movie. It was all fan-driven, uh, based both mostly on our social, you know, the cast social media and us pushing it. Um, so, you know, I think they were quite uh, pleasantly surprised by the popularity and how far we got to Netflix uh, in terms of... Number eight globally, but number two in the United States, I think it yeah. was, which was uh, really yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's you guys. fantastic. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, I certainly hope that we get to do um, more movies. I think we'd both be down with it. Yeah. Who? He is? Uh, oh, but yeah, well, okay. yeah, uh, old villains need old ran uh, former rangers to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Cool. Who do we ask? Um, oh, the Blue Ranger himself. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to hear about your guys' approach to acting. Now, could you talk to us a little bit about your technique? Are you outside in, inside out actors? Just tell us a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Walter's an inside out actor. There you go. Uh, I, I've studied lots of different techniques. Uh, I think what I found myself to be more comfortable with these days is um, just like creating a backstory for my character, um, doing subtext with the, with, the, with the dialogue, you know, subtext is when I read whatever's written by the writers and I say it in my own words, in my mind, and then, or I write it in my own words and then I say it as if I'm saying it, what I, what, what I would say. So that's one of the techniques I use. And then just being, Oh, uh, using Meisner, being open and listening, really truly being affected by what I hear. Yeah. I mean, I would say the same thing. For me, the, the most important thing is character development, and it is like your backstory. So uh, it's really important if you want to be an actor that you create that. Even though you might not ever see a backstory being said within a, a script, it's important for you as an actor to know that. Like, so for me, when we were doing the original series, uh, Billy's mother was never, ever established. And for me, I always played, like everybody else's parents were established, Billy's dad was the only one that was established. So from that moment, I always played that Billy's mom had passed away when he was very young, like when he was seven years old. So there was always that subtext in everything that he does in life, that he lost his mom at a young age. And you know, I know there's kids out there that can relate to that. So uh, those are, I think, important qualities that actors need to really work on bringing. It's not just about saying the lines. Even though with Power Rangers, sometimes it feels like, just say the line. <laughs> Unfortunately, like, it's morphin' time. But there can always be something behind it's morphin' time. You know what I mean? I only had the family there. So did you have both parents? You just I only had the dad. father. Yep. I, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the Power Rangers episode, I had both my parents. And the father that played my father, I think he had like one line, he only had two lines. He became quite famous in LA. And like 10 years later, people were going, Yeah, I just saw your dad at this thing. He was like signing autographs. I was like, Who? <laughs> I was like, He was on the set one day, but he, like, I am the Black Major's dad, and like, just was like, really made the best out of it. It was crazy. That's good marketing, though. That, good was, for him. that was the funny thing, too. When we were filming the original, uh, we're going off topic now, sorry. Uh, when we filmed the original, the guy that played uh, the Red Ranger, Jason's dad, he, 
he created a fake petition and mail in, like, oh, we really liked him. We want to see more of him. He sent all these letters. A, a fake letter writing to campaign for him yeah, to be fake back. Fake letter on the writing show. campaign to make him uh, like a, a real person. I just remember going, this guy is crazy. <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do to get in Hollywood. But I just remember them, uh, a couple of producers saying, like, oh, this guy is like, he's writing letters saying they really, you know, kids really want to see him and all that kind of stuff. Hilarious. Before we go on, just briefly, uh, Ricardo Toro, are you out there? Your son was looking for you. Did uh, did you? Uh, yeah, uh, if you wouldn't mind, back in the back there. Just I got a message about it. Make sure that they are safe. That's first and foremost. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, uh, hey guys, um, my name is Mark. Uh, just uh, you probably heard it a bunch of times, but I just want to thank you guys again for uh, the entertainment you provided us over the 30 years, and uh, thank you guys for coming as well. So we really appreciate it. And uh, I just wanted to ask a question about um, what did it mean for you guys to uh, finally be a part of a unionized production for uh, the Once and Always under Netflix's um, uh, or Hasbro's reign? What did it mean for us? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I think uh, I, I can't. I'll speak for me, but I believe for both Walter and myself. You know, I think it was really important for us. We really wanted to come back to the series, and we really wanted to have our characters being shown in a more adult. Uh, type of thing, so it really meant a lot for me to get to come back. Uh, obviously, because again, we travel, <laughs> we travel all around the world, and so many people continually ask us, "When are you guys coming back? When are you coming back? Please come back!" And so it was, it was a big deal for us to come back, and uh, for me, it was a huge honor to get to play Billy again and to, to maybe see where Billy was. I wish again, maybe this is another thing they didn't really explain anything about Billy. Last time we saw Billy, he went off to Aquatar and he was on another planet. Suddenly, Billy's back on planet Earth, and he's got Cranston Tech, but they don't tell you like kind of what happened in between. So that was a little disappointing. And that only takes like two sentences, but uh, you know, at the very end, they say, "Oh, Billy, uh, Sestra misses you," which is dumb to me uh, <laughs> because I don't believe Billy had any true relationship with Sestra, and it's 30 years later. Come on, guys, we can think of something better than that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Boom Studios. Boom Studios has done an amazing job with Power Rangers. Period. If you read the comic books, so I'll let Walter speak. I'm sorry. Oh no worries. Um, I I was very excited to go back. I the show has been non-union since I left. Um, I joined the union right after I left the show. It did go union one year, but I wasn't invited to come back during the year. Um, and um, and that's been a part of the reason I had to go back is because it was non-union. So when I did voice monsters, a little bit different doing voiceover, but um, uh, I was excited to go back. I I really felt like when I left the show, it was uninterrupted. It was interrupted because I didn't plan to leave the show. I planned to negotiate the contract and come back. And so all of a sudden, I wasn't coming back, and I wasn't doing a movie. And it was like it was like, oh, okay, that's that's over. So I got no closure. So this time when I went back, and it was like. David and I just finished doing this big scene, and they go, "Okay, that's a wrap for Walter Jones, a uh, show wrap." And I, I almost lost my ish. I was like, I, it was I, I finally heard that's a wrap for Walter Jones, and I'm like, this is something I started. It's been going for 30 years, and finally, I get to be, I get some closure, and it, it, it affected me in a way that was very emotional. And um, yeah, I was just, I was really happy to be able to go back. Like we got somebody right up front here. Yeah. Right. So okay. After the of course, Mighty Morphin aired, and since I didn't grow up watching it though, so I did went back. I watched all the seasons. It was amazing. And then later on in the years, I after all, I rewatched them again. And you guys wanted an actually an inspiration, and I became an actor. And thank you guys for doing that. But my question is that um, with the 30th anniversary that's out, what was it like working with Kat, Nikia, and all of them? Uh, I, I, I've known them all for quite some time, um, and that's been cool. I think we did, um, we've never really been on camera together uh, or worked together as actors. So it was interesting because 
David's character I know. I know Billy. Zach and Billy have a history. Dave, Walter and David have a history. It kind of worked in unison. It's like I am myself as a grown man. David's himself as a grown man. We don't always have the same opinion, but we can appreciate each other. And, and we go like, oh, okay. I'm like, I get what you I get your perspective. He gets my perspective sometimes. But um, working with them was different because it was like, well, I don't really know who Rocky is. So when Rocky came in, it was like, you know, it's an emergency. He's talking about a soup. I'm like, I want to hit him in the head. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, you don't know. Yeah, I'm like, know this I don't know him. Like, so I don't know this character. And I'm like, that's why you, you know. And then my exact mind is like, but this is serious. And he come here, guys, I didn't give you my lunch. I didn't give you my lunch. And I'm like, I don't know if I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, that's <was laughs> funny. <clears throat> but working with them, like when I finally got to see it, I was like, oh, that's his character. This is their characters. It's interesting because I didn't know their characters. I never saw the show. Yeah. So watching it now, I was like, oh, this is different. Okay, all right, all right I got you. All right, we're working together as a team. That's the way it would be working with a new team. It's like you're gonna be. There's gonna be different personalities, different people, and you, you know, you work together. But it was. I thought it came together well, and I, I was happy we were able uh, to work together. It's a great yeah, question. Just for me, I mean, obviously, I think I'm the only actor that has worked with everybody because I was one of the longest running uh, original actors. So, obviously, I had worked with them before. So it was it was great to have them come back to. I mean, and uh, be a part of it. I'm glad that they were able to do it. We had a lot of fun doing it. Wow. Very cool. I hate to be the bad guy, but we've only got time for one more question. I believe it. They always go by quickly for these uh, panels here. So, about five more minutes on this one. Uh, hello again, David. Uh, as you've met me and my mom, um, and the pleasure to you as well. Walter, I've been a big fan since I was a kid. Um, I would say I would have two questions, but um, um, now that you just mentioned about the Boom Studios comics, what's it like to see more stories set like outside or between the stories? More extensions like Tommy's character getting assimilation to. Re to obtain the White Ranger's powers, or the fact that they had a crossover comic with the Justice League back in 2017. Uh, it's cool how many different things that the Power Rangers do in comic book form, right? Yeah, no, it's amazing. And let me tell you something. I'm a big fan of Superman. I always have been. And when I open up the comic book and saw Zack talking to Superman, I'm like, I'm talking to Superman! <laughs> so hyped. I was like, yo, I'm fighting Batman, talking to Superman. I'm like, we hanging out. Where's Wonder Woman? Let me talk to her. You, know. <laughs> you gotta fight. All you gotta do is get an in, right? That's it. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool what Boom Studios has done uh, with the comic books and just, I mean, I believe uh, Zach become the Omega Rangers and all that kind of stuff that they do with Jason and uh, yeah. Trini oh, and Zach. Yeah. So I think that's really cool that they have all these different uh, storylines going on, but um, it's, it's awesome to get to see what they do. I don't know that I would do everything that they do if we were going to film a movie or a television series, but uh, they certainly give you a lot to think about in terms of character, uh, which is awesome. And I love, like, way back, uh, probably in one of the more uh, first Mighty Morphin, uh, no, Go-Go Power Rangers, when uh, they wrote that Billy and Skull were a childhood best friends. And yeah, so I always thought that was kind of cool, and at some point the division happened, you know. So that was, there's a lot of little cool story things that I wouldn't have thought about that they, they really did. So if you haven't read the comic books, I'm not a comic book person, but I, I got into comic books because of the Power Ranger comic books. So they, they've done a great, great job. But That's really amazing that you've read them and enjoyed them. Yeah, yeah. but there is a point where it can be too much. Uh, you know, with all the different universes. I can't keep up. My brain's not that good. I only play smart on TV. <laughs> but you play it very well. Guys, for 30 years, you have entertained uh, for a few minutes, uh, about 15 minutes, you've entertained it. No, yeah. No, you guys have been some of the most amazing people uh, throughout all of the years, all the generations, all of the fans. We're honored to have you here this afternoon. So thank you for spending some time with us. Please give it up for the original Blue Ranger and Black Ranger.